All right, so we're making a quick cut right in here. And basically what we're doing, the, uh, it's kind of funny. The lower control arm from the mini attaches right back there. Now, surprisingly enough, that's actually the exact same fit for the bushing uh, that comes off of the, uh, the GSX. So what we originally did was we just uh, took the bushing off, threw the GSX one directly in, and it fit perfectly, except that it was about an inch too high off center. And what ended up happening was it would sit on top of this bar. And what that means is it's in the way of the axle. So you actually can't use the OEM mini mount, and we actually have to lower and create our own mount about an inch, inch and a half lower. And what that's gonna allow us to do is put our GSX lower control arm right here. We'll actually just bolt it straight into this. We'll weld up a blank for it um, and then put a like a channel side coming up on the other side and then we'll bolt through that using the GSX bushing. We'll make a new collar for it um, and then that way if I ever need to replace them I can just replace them with the OEM GSX or obviously not going OEM because it's initial DIY mods. We're gonna be replacing it with another polyurethane. This one's polyurethane 60A. We might stick with 60, we might increase it. Just depends on how this works out on this chassis. Then once we get the lower control arm mounted in here, um, obviously we're gonna just remove the whole thing, finish cutting that. Weld up a plate, weld up some bracketry, put our bolt through, have our axle come through and everything's gonna be nice and happy. Oh, it's a tight fit. All right, getting that sway bar off. That pretty much ruined my night. My back hurts so bad right now. This Friday's gonna end early. I'm just gonna go hang out with my wife. Basically, we need to get these off. We tried kind of cutting it, but it's really thick cast iron, so it's not too much of a point of trying to cut the entire freaking thing off and destroying like 10 blades uh, with the sawzall for that. So took it off, we're gonna see if we can get it with the chop wheel. So we need this bracket to keep a good spacing on the subframe to the underbody of the car. However, we don't need this lower control arm mount. <laughs> Even though the GSX one does fit perfectly, um, it's not the right height. So we actually need to basically offset it an entire diameter. So the lower control arm is gonna be flush with the bottom of the subframe uh, when it's flat. So that's gonna be basically when the axle's straight, which hopefully we can get the suspension height set right. Uh, we can get it perfectly flat uh, when the car is loaded and on the ground. Uh, a little bit up obviously when it's unloaded and fully compressed, it'll be a little bit, but shouldn't give much torque steer that way. Hopefully be relatively balanced. Um, fuck, these things are heavy as shit too. But yeah, that's cast iron for you. Um, this does provide a little bit of lateral bracing as well as make sure that this piece doesn't cause any bending that way. Um, but I don't really care too much about press fitting this out. Uh, and my new mount will be two piece. It's going to look like one half is like this. It's basically going to be right here, something like that. The lower control arm uh, from the GSX, that bushing, that OEM GSX bushing, uh, right in there. And that way, it's just four bolts to take this off rather than dropping the entire subframe to change out a bushing. Also, I hate this bushing. This bushing sucks. And also, since I do have it out, I will be welding the back side of this. Obviously, I couldn't get to it with the power steering uh, still in the car. So, um, I'll have to grind that out and do that. The other thing I have to modify on the subframe, this thing is really heavy. The other thing I have to modify on the subframe, the transfer case is getting caught up right here in this section. Um, we bent the lip up to clear a little bit, uh, but once we got that engine set down and in place, when the engine weight goes down, transfer case rotates, not only does it hit this, uh, but it actually stops the transfer case from being level. So the transfer case ends up pointing towards the back wheels, basically, towards the ground a little bit. So we need to clear out this and get the engine rotated a little bit more 
forward so that the transfer case goes closer to the bottom of the car so we can have our drive shaft running straight through. Um, we don't really need these exhaust hangers anymore, but they're not hurting anybody, so we'll leave it. So we're just going to basically um, put a relief cut in here, um, just cut out this whole bottom section, bend the metal inward a little bit, and then weld it back in just a little bit lower. Um, if we can, looks like there's some internal bracing and stuff, so it's going to be pretty hard. We might just bash the shit out of it with a sledgehammer to see if we can get the clearance in here uh, that we need. All right, we got the subframe back in, and if you saw on Instagram, I posted up a little bit of the work that I did here on reinforcing the subframe. So, as you recall, I did chop off earlier in this video, uh, I did chop off the mount that went originally from here to the Mini Cooper frame rail. The way that we had it before was great for mock-up, but it didn't allow for a real strength when the engine loading uh, was gonna be on the back mount here as well as the fact that the suspension's coming off here and you're gonna have a lot of vertical and horizontal loading on this point and it's not tied into anything because we cut it off. So we actually did tie into the same point on the factory frame rail, which is again, super nice. We're able to keep basically the same bolts, OEM, everything, uh, which is good, makes it easy to make sure that the spec is right uh, and then still have our frame. All we did, we took the original piece that instead of going up and kind of curving out this way, we rotated it and moved it so it curved back this way around our axle. Uh, we extended the box section here with some eighth inch plate, which is actually thicker than uh, what the spec is. I believe this is actually 16th inch plate. So basically double the thickness on that to make up for any issues with welds or anything like that. That's where the spray paint dried weird right there. Um, and we tied into our mount here. So um, this is gonna be a really, really strong, which is gonna be awesome. And uh, again, it, it clears our axle, so that's what we did. All right, so you can see here, we did just keep the Mini Cooper mount right there. It really didn't affect anything. It uh, allows the subframe to be tied in very well to keep it from moving side to side uh, in that center bracing. And then we just tied in on top of that with a bolt-in piece that mounts the lower control arm. We still need to reinforce the subframe in the back where the bolts come out of the subframe. And I'm just gonna do that with some eighth inch angle iron that's going to tie everything in. Right, so I got the bolts coming out there. They're basically just tacked in. Uh, really strong tacks just to hold everything in place. But it's not going to take any jumps or anything like that. So we're going to come up with some bracing that's going to tie it into the subframe so the bolts aren't taking the load uh, on the head of the bolt where it's welded. But rather the steel is going to take the load uh, and then the bolts are just going to hold the mount in place on the, on the bottom there. But then that means it's fully removable which makes it really easy to drop the control arms if we need to. All right, 
guys. Thanks for tuning in. On the next episode, you're going to see us actually get the suspension done. So this one video basically covered all the subframe modifications that we had to do, uh, which again, it's it's not, it, it is kind of a lot, but it's really, in terms of the swap, I've seen a lot worse. We didn't have to do any sort of custom tubular subframes. We just did a square tube, square box section uh, modification there to get that to snake around the front axle of the GSX. We'll go into the suspension on the next episode, how we did the lower control arm mounts, both front and rear, um, for the front lower control arms. And then we're also going to do the strut to hub adapter assembly, which allowed us basically to take the GSX hub and mount it to the Mini Cooper strut. Uh, so that's going to allow us to keep everything pretty much control our ride height, uh, control our camber adjustment, control where our, our car sits normally. Um, so that's also good. So I'll show that in the next episode. <clears throat> and also, if you guys uh, didn't check out the last episode, um, Please give it a check out. It's, it's not a long video, but it uh, just kind of covers why there's been an absence in the videos lately. Basically, my kitten uh, became deathly ill twice, um, including nearly dying on the operating table uh, from the second surgery due to complications from the first surgery, which happened due to basically the uh, intestine um, folding in on itself, not allowing food to pass. So we do have a GoFundMe. The link is in the description. I really appreciate even if it's just $5, whatever it is, uh, it really does help out. We had to pay $1,800 basically just to keep our kitten alive, and that's not including cost. We had to drive an hour away to the uh, to the vet for that. So, um, and you know, eight trips later, it, it does add up in, in fuel. We spent over $100 just in fuel, just trying to trying to keep our kitten alive. He's doing a lot better. Um, he's being mischievous. Nope. <laughs> that's what you get, asshole. Hey. You done being a big dummy? No climbing on the couch. Bad. You! <sighs> Damn near mission impossible -ing some stuff, so... So it's great to have him back, but again, um wasn't really ready to, to spend $2,000 on, on a kitten surgery, especially one month after we got the kitten. So um, we really do appreciate that. It really does help, help us out and uh, allows us to keep the videos coming. Um, we did basically haven't touched the car in, in about a week, um, just trying to, to focus on work and everything else. So awesome, I'll try to get the next video out. Should be out in a week, um, middle of next week and uh, it's already been filmed, the suspension's already been built. Basically, if you've been following on Instagram, you can see what's been going on with the car that hasn't made it to the videos yet. Um, so you get a good preview there. You can see how I'm building the suspension. I'm posting up uh, tacks in place. I'm posting up full welds. I'm posting up paint. I'm posting up ideas. Sometimes things that end up getting changed and don't work out. So it's a, a lot of extra content. Check that out. Make sure to check out the website, initialdiymods.com. Make sure to check out the shop there as well so you can help to support the page. Again, check out the GoFundMe. That's just for Case K. Any extra that's, uh, the whole story's in the, in the GoFundMe and in the last video, but any extras that are uh, coming from that GoFundMe, they do not go to the car. Only going to pay the vet, vet bills and any extra is going to go to a local shelter or charity here to help out animals um, in the Ohio, Michigan area. So, uh, so please help out with that, uh, all the animal lovers and whatnot. Enjoy that. Um, I'll catch up with you guys on the next video. Peace. We got a lot of cool stuff. The good stuff is about to happen. So stay tuned. Thanks.